Hello, I'm meteorologist Jeff Matthews. You joined the module on hurricanes. This always gets people's attention. Hurricanes, along with tsunamis and earthquakes, are the most destructive forces on the earth. They're the biggest storm on the earth. They really are the same thing as a low pressure system or a cyclone. They're just much bigger and they form a little bit differently. First of all, they're the biggest storm and can cover a third of the country at a given time based on their size. They're also incredibly intense, but they always form over the ocean water. They bring devastating effects in terms of wind, which can exceed 150 mile per hour continuously for hours, storm surge, where the ocean literally comes ashore for miles because of the wind driving the waves on shore. And then flooding rains, like you can see in this picture, where all these homes are underwater. Sometimes they can drop as much as 20 or 25 inches, that's two feet, of rain. This can cause devastation in terms of flooding and damage. Let's get back to how they form and where they move. They always form over the ocean water. They're made up of water, and they need warm ocean water to be created and to continue to grow. They always form near the equator, because that's where the ocean water is warmest. Generally, a hurricane will or will not form if the temperature of the water is 82 degrees. If it's cooler than that, a hurricane will have a very hard time trying to form. If it's warmer than that, that's an excellent environment for a hurricane to get started. As the hurricane begins to develop from a tropical depression to a tropical storm to a hurricane, and that's based on the wind speed around its center and how organized it becomes, they tend to begin drifting in the Atlantic Ocean towards the west or towards land, but they don't want to necessarily hit land because land doesn't have much water and the temperature may or may not be warm enough to sustain them. So they tend to drift towards the land, but they also tend, as they get closer to land, to start turning northwards. As they start turning northwards, they also encounter cooler and cooler ocean water which tends to weaken them with time. Another thing that will weaken them is if they actually hit land, because the land is, of course, taller than the water. The water's flat. The land has elevation, and that tends to break the hurricane up as it moves ashore. But that also allows the hurricane to dispense all of its dramatic, destructive effects of wind and surf and rainfall. As the storm continues to move westwards and intensify, it takes that turn to the north at some point and then either encounters land and begins to break up or moves into cold enough water that it begins to lose its energy source and dissipate. Hurricanes can last as long as a day or as long as two weeks, depending on how fast they move. Okay, let's talk about hurricanes and take our quiz. Are you ready? Get your thinking hat on and pen and paper. Question one, where do hurricanes always form? Talked about that. Question two, what ways are they destructive? I mentioned three of them. And number three, what causes the hurricane to die out? And I mentioned two ways that the hurricane can die out. So there you go, your hurricane quiz. Okay, did you think about it? It's time for the answers. Question one, where do hurricanes always form? I began by explaining to you that they always form over the ocean and over warm ocean water, like near the equator. Question two, what ways do they cause destruction? And I mentioned three different ways. The wind, the waves crashing ashore and moving inland, and the heavy torrential rain. What causes them to die out? They either hit land or they move into colder ocean water, neither of which allows them to continue to exist or to grow. 
There's the answers to your hurricane quiz. I hope you enjoyed it.